With over 1,000 Pokemon now available, a good signature move can be what sets a Pokemon apart from the rest. From Sacred Fire to the likes of Thunderclap, a good signature move can be the whole reason a Pokemon sees any usage at all. These are certainly great moves, but we can't really ignore that there are some real stinkers out there. Last week I discussed which moves are the best in competitive Pokemon, but today I'll be explaining which signature moves are the bottom of the barrel and see practically no use. If you enjoy this video at any point in time, be sure to like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now as a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into it. I suppose we should start with Gen 1. Not because I'm going to be going in chronological order or anything, but because Gen 1 signature moves are a different breed of bad. These moves just kinda suck. And for some reason, most of the signature moves from this generation, despite how strong the user may be, are all pretty particularly weak. For what reason? I don't know. But Pokemon eventually kind of got its act together with signature moves, so for now we'll just talk about these. Barrage is by far the signature move which puzzles me the most. As a signature move of the Executor line, a Pokemon which is phenomenal in Generation 1, you'd imagine that this move would stand up to its legacy. But Barrage, despite Executor being a Grass Psychic type, is a normal type move, meaning it hits nothing for super effective damage, and it's resisted by rock and steel, with Ghost being immune to it. But beyond that, Barrage is a simple reskin of Fury Attack. At 15 base power and 85 accuracy, and a chance to hit between 2 and 5 times, it caps out at a measly 75 base power, making it weaker than Body Slam, a move which has perfect accuracy, 85 base power, and a chance to paralyze. I mean, this move is basically just Executor sending coconuts at the opponent, so why not make it a slightly more powerful Bullet Seed by setting its base power to 30 and giving it perfect accuracy? It could even be switched to be a special version of Bullet Seed if you want to let Executor run a solid option beyond Leaf Storm. Regardless, the current version of the move just isn't cutting it. Next up is Kinesis. I'm gonna keep it a buck 65 with you guys. Whoever cooked up Alakazam's signature move burned the kitchen down. It's an 80 accuracy move which lowers the target's accuracy by one stage. 80 accuracy. That's the same accuracy as Hydro Pump. This is a signature move. This is supposed to be the super cool thing that Alakazam can do that nothing else can. But for some reason, it's just a direct downgrade to Sand Attack? I I'm not kidding. It's simply the exact same move but reskinned with lower accuracy. Yeah, there's not much to say here. This move kind of sucks. Clamp, on the other hand, could be considered a somewhat interesting signature move. As a signature move of the Cloister line in Generation 1, which was later gifted to the Clam Pearl and Barbarical line, I'm still going to include it here because it has some pretty limited applications. But I will acknowledge that a physical Whirlpool is kind of a neat move, but none of the Pokémon who have access to it would actually want to run it. See, trapping moves are strong situationally. They have applications in Paris Trapping and Singles, and can even see fringe usage in Doubles. But literally every Pokémon who has access to this move is far more effective as a Shell Smash Sweeper meaning that none of them would even consider running this move over any more powerful water moves that they have access to. I don't know, just give it to Don Dozo and then it might see some play. I'm not kidding, it'd be cool if Don Dozo had a trapping move like that. Okay, so the last of the Generation 1 signature moves we gotta cover is Payday. 40 base power scatters coins. That's certainly a description. Look, I know this move is meant to farm money, but I know I'd get a lot of comments saying that I forgot about it if I didn't at least mention it. It's useful for in-game purposes, but competitively, it's not doing anything for a team. You want to hit a money spread on your opponent and win the game? You click make it rain with Golden Go. Case closed. Speaking of money, we may be discussing the worst signature moves, but one of the best moves you could be making is trying out Factor. Recently, Factor sent me a bunch of meals and drinks to try out for the sponsorship, and believe me when I say these are some high-quality meals. They arrived in this package that kept them cool and ready to be transferred to my fridge, where at any point I could throw them in the microwave for two minutes and enjoy a fresh, never-frozen meal. As a full-time content creator, I spend a lot of my day writing and editing videos, so these delicious meal kits have not only been convenient, but they've even helped me stick to my health goals, as many of the meals I tried were high-protein. Factor isn't just delicious, but it's cheaper than takeout and faster than cooking, so you can save money while you treat yourself. You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code MOXIE to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's code MOXIE at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month's orders. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video.
Okay, I changed my mind. We are going to go in chronological order just because I don't know how else to structure this video. And I really want to talk about this move already. Dark Void is the signature move of Darkrai, a legendary Pokemon which has never been legal in official competitive play. It was originally an 80 accuracy move which puts both opponents to sleep, meaning that it was not only a spread move, but a sleep move that was more accurate than Sleep Powder, the best sleep move in the game save for Spore which has extremely limited distribution. Dark Void has effectively been gutted beyond the point of repair, to a frankly hilarious degree to be honest. Smeargle was known to run Dark Void in VGC because of its ability to sometimes instantly win the games when paired with a restricted partner like Primal Groudon or Xerneas. Smeargle's Moody ability also let it, at the time, get both accuracy boost and speed boost to make the move even more threatening. So Game Freak, in their infinite wisdom, said, okay, this Smeargle guy's abusing the heck out of Darkrai's move, so let's just make it so Smeargle can't use it. And then all was right with the world. Then they nerfed Dark Void to be 50 accuracy. Why? I, I don't know, Darkrai isn't ever tournament legal, so why did they nerf the move into the ground if it was never going to be used in competitions again? For reference, this makes Dark Void the least accurate sleep move in the game, less accurate than Sing, a move with 55 accuracy. The only formats where Darkrai is legal are Smogon singles formats, where Dark Void being a spread move doesn't even matter. So in those formats, Darkrai, if it wants to play optimally, actually runs Hypnosis, a 60 accuracy sleep move. You know you messed up big time when the only Pokemon that gets access to a move doesn't even run it. Speaking of moves that are so bad the Soul user doesn't run it, Powder is the signature move of Vivalon. It's a pretty cool concept, Powder is a priority move which sets up Powder on the opposing Pokemon and causes the use of a fire move on that turn to be blown up in the user's face, and deal 25% of their total health and damage instead. While very cool, it is extremely niche, obviously. And Vivalon almost never ran it in competitive play because in the face of a Fire-type Pokemon, it could alternatively just, like, put it to sleep with Sleep Powder? With Compound Eyes, Sleep Powder becomes a 97 accuracy move, and those last move slots would be better filled with the likes of Hurricane, Bug Buzz, and Quiver Dance. Yeah, Powder was a neat idea, but the move saw nearly no use in competition due to Vivalon just having outright better options in the one situation Powder was meant to be useful. What is kind of crazy though, is that for a few generations, there weren't any outright bad signature moves introduced. But for some reason, come generation 8 and 9, Pokemon started to shoot air balls. Like, a lot of air balls. Like some of these moves make the same mistakes that they made way back in generation 1. Let's take for example Tarshot. Tarshot is a pretty crazy move, not because it does anything particularly cool, but because it is the signature move of the Colossal line, the Pokemon that dominated much of Gen 8 VGC, and despite this, You've probably never heard of the move. So what does it do? Well, Tar Shot lowers the target's speed by one stage and makes them weaker to fire moves. I can almost get what they were going for here, I'm not gonna lie. Colossal is one of my favorite design Pokemon of all time, and if you want to see why, I actually have an old video going over the Pokemon's genius design. But to put it briefly, it's a tanky Pokemon which could instantly become a fast sweeper if it's hit by a super effective water move. Tarshot could be a really unique design speed control move for Colossal if it were able to run this move reliably while still being able to sweep teams with weakness policy and steam engine. But because Colossal isn't moving first, there isn't much of a reason to run speed control on it. I could imagine a set where Colossal is able to run Tarshot, lowering something's speed so a partner fire type Pokemon can now outspeed it and then one shot it with its new fire weakness. But this is simply too hard to consistently achieve in VGC. Honestly, a fix for this move could be to make it hit both opponents like Icy Wind, and that would allow for a slow Colossal to just tar shot the opponents, lower both their speeds, make them weak to fire, and give the Fire-type Pokemon a much more powerful opportunity to score KOs on the next turn. While that might sound broken, you need to keep in mind this strategy does require you to run Colossal in a format without Dynamax. So... Meanwhile, False Surrender, also from Generation 8, is much more underwhelming than it is outright bad. False Surrender was created in Gen 8 for the Grimstar line. As an 80 base power physical dark move, False Surrender was just meant to be a thematically appropriate signature move for Grimstar that had the bonus of not checking accuracy. But in Generation 9, King Gambit was introduced with its own signature move, being Kowtow Cleave, a physical dark move with 85 base power, which doesn't check accuracy. And they both have 16 PP, you can't make this up, they're the same move. I mean, they're literally conceptually the same move too. To kowtow is to bow and show honor to someone, but instead of doing that, King Gambit just smacks him in the face. And False Surrender's description says that the user pretends to bow its head and then stabs the target with its hair. 
It's literally the same move. King Gambit just got it later on in the power creep, so it's just, it's just stronger. That's kind of crazy, right? Okay, so Shelter is yet another move that isn't outright terrible, but there's seriously no purpose in running it over another move. See, Shelter was introduced in Generation 8's Pokemon Legends Arceus, a game with a very different battle system than traditional Pokemon games. And due to this, many of the moves in this game had to be toned down or changed to be translated to Scarlet and Violet. Shelter was one of these moves. Originally, it was the signature move of the Hisui and Gudra line, which would increase its defenses while obscuring it and making it so attacks on Gudra were less likely to hit. It was a pretty busted move despite the fact that stat changes weren't permanent in Pokemon Legends Arceus's battle system. Of course, a move which raises defense and evasion would be absolutely unacceptable in a traditional Pokemon game. So what did Game Freak do? They made it so Shelter increases the user's defense stat by two stages. Just like Iron Defense, a move that Hisui and Gudra also gets. Only Iron Defense has much more PP than Shelter, and you might say that this doesn't really matter because you're not really ever going to click Shelter more than 3 or 4 times in a game, but Iron Defense is an outright better option since Hisui and Gudra is a stall Pokemon. The absolute worst thing a stall Pokemon can do is run out of PP since the recoil damage on clicking Struggle is just so punishing. You'd rather click Iron Defense a few more times than start struggling because you ran out of shelters. This is the sole reason Hisui and Gudra doesn't run its own signature move in competitive matches. As we make our way into Gen 9, we need to acknowledge one of the strongest signature moves ever. Surging Strikes is a physical water type attack which hits the target three times, each hit resulting in a critical hit. Oh, wait, nope, this isn't that. This is the Wish.com Surging Strikes. Wug Trio not only is one of the weakest Pokemon ever designed with a near useless stat spread and ability pool, but its signature move of Triple Dive is an outright downgrade to Surging Strikes, being 30 base power, hitting 3 times, and for some reason, still having a chance to miss? Don't get me wrong, on another Pokemon, Triple Dive would be worth that chance to miss, but when you're hitting things with the attack stat of a literal wet noodle, it's not particularly useful. In Generation 9, water types not named Dondozo were kind of robbed with their signature moves, to be honest, because Veluza's signature move of Filet Away is far too risky for the Mon to ever make use of it in VGC. Filet Away is a lot like Shell Smash, but rather than having the user's defenses to double its speed and attack stats, this move requires that the user halves its HP. The reason it's simply too much of a sacrifice for this move is because where Shell Smash users can use a Focus Sash or White Herb to bypass much of the risk of that move, Filet Away in no way benefits from these items. On the very turn you go for Filet Away, you could be prevented from clicking it because Veluza got outsped and hit for too much damage, leaving it with not enough HP to actually click the move. Or worse, Veluza just moves first and gets KO'd before it can even click an attack since it halved its own HP. Belly Drum has the same requirement to activate, but at the very least it maximizes the user's attack stat regardless of what stage the user's attack is at when it clicks the move. I don't know, this move just kinda isn't worth running. Also, Sketch. Sketch is a bad signature move in battles. Yeah, but Marcos, it can copy any move in the game. Dang, that sounds like you're not clicking Sketch in battles, huh? I know I'm not. You're, you're clicking the other moves that you copied outside the battles. I don't make the rules. I do. I made the rules for this video. But those are the worst signature moves in competitive Pokemon. I don't think I missed any, but I'm sure I did somehow. Let me know in the comment section below if I did miss one, and if you agree or disagree with what I had to say. Also, let me know if I should make a video. Also, let me know what I should make a video on next. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You also see your name at the end of my videos, like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, and Ranger Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support my channel is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current BGC metagame trends, and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which are going to be in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!